<laughs> yes, Princess Morocco, how are you? I'm good, and you, Mama, how are you doing? I'm good, and Inkosi Shanga Shinga. Sawona Inkosi Shinga. Okay. I see you are in numbers, deputy chair. Yes, 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 yes. Even the chairpersons of provincial houses are part of this meeting. Among I can see. And others. Yes. Uh, I saw in position yes, from KZN. I, I, I see this is Hoshimavi from uh, North Northwest. Northwest. Yes. Yes. And then uh, let me see who uh, else uh, is here. Morena Lifamu Peri is also here. From Free State, Deputy Chair. From Free State. Whom else? Inkosim Langama Voso as well is here. And KPOs. Mm. So those are the ones I can recognize. Yeah, others are still going to join. Okay. Uh, GM Wapela. Good evening. Good evening, uh, Modula Stulo. Okay, Hoshi Bapela. It's only the repeat healer at Sava Corona Delta Fed. Okay. Did you depofas Dumela and one name Sutobe? Evening, evening, Chairperson. Hey, hey, let me greet also the DG Decock. Good evening, DG. Good evening, Honorable Chairperson. Yes. Everyone. Okay. And I love your fun calls, Chairperson. Very beautiful. Thank you. Hi, colleagues. Uh, I see you are here. Honorable Space, are you well? Have, I see. I've been watching your space. You should be very well. Good evening, Honorable Spice. Honorable Spice, I'm greeting you. She's grabbing a cup of coffee. Good evening, Honorable Brink. Good evening, Honorable Grunewald. Yes, Honorable Grunewald, good evening. Evening, Honorable Plaza. Honorable Direko, Mam Keys is our one. Who else did I miss? Mukali, you have already greeted us. Hi, Chair. Yes. Okay. Honorable Claza. Good I evening. Have been Chairperson. I started with you. I even yeah, say, yeah. I think. You have been so well. I can see you are all over. Where were you? You were gri gripping a cup of coffee, I suppose. <laughs> I started with you. <laughs> yes, thank you, Che. Sorry, I missed that one. <laughs> Don't behave like Kali, who's forever, who's forever gunning for me. Please, please. No, no, Jay, I love you, man. I love you. You know that. <laughs> Don't behave you know, like you just love to this one. <laughs> The first I thing she comes into the meeting. You, you know very well. Where's the chairperson? Whereas I'm in the meeting. Oh, uh, good evening, chairperson. Yes, you are more than welcome. Okay. Yes, I think I've greeted all of you colleagues. Uh, Honorable Buteles, hey, before she fights with me. <laughs> How are you, Honorable <laughs> Buteles? I am good. Thank you so much, chairperson. How are you? Recording in no. progress. I'm good. Thank you, I think we need to. We need to start our meeting, yes. And then let me greet all the other colleagues, our senior traditional leaders. Hosi wakang peku, yalibona litzen. Tovel, Hosi. Dumel. So the rest have already recognized all of you. We have got our regular colleagues from uh, PMG, our parliamentary support staff, parliament communications, everybody is here. And then let me start to welcome all of you. I think now we know the house rules. 
We need to keep our microphones on mute until we are recognized by the chairperson. And then we also need to make sure that our videos are also on mute until we are recognized by the chairperson to also switch them on because this is a live broadcast for, for, from Parliament TV. So I'll plead with all of you to make sure that when you are to speak, you need to put your video on and you know the rules around that don't allow some people to be moving around yourselves. I think you are in your all in your private rooms in the comfort of your home. So though those are the things that we, we normally deal with. Then without uh, wasting much of the time, I want to welcome all of you, Deputy Minister with the entire team and the members of the house led by the Deputy Chairperson uh, and the CEO I see is here. Also to welcome the Director General of Traditional Affairs, including our the Director General of DCOC, including the other senior manager from the Department of Cooperative Governance. And then we need, we are meeting, SF, this meeting of tonight, colleagues, you'll recall that this is a follow-up on the series of engagements we have had with the department on the community works program. It's starting from our own induction workshop that we held uh, in Cape Town. Uh, our last follow-up meeting was on the 22nd of April this year. This is the day we had to regrettably reject the department's presentation as the responses provided by the accounting officer were very unsatisfactory. And then uh, Honorable Hadebe seems to have misplaced the link. Can you help him get the link so that he can participate? Yeah, so in the meeting of the 21st of 22nd of April, we did ask uh, the department to submit by the 29th of April information on which non-profit organization were and are still not submitting invoices as expected in terms of their service level agreements for the 2018-19, 2019-20 and the 2020-21 financial years. In that meeting, we had also requested the department to quantify the rent value of these unaccounted invoices. Uh, we are saying this because the, the department must also assist us to understand how the presentation addresses this request and ex explain to us also why this information did not reach the committee by the stipulated deadline. Secondly, we asked the department to finish the five forensic Recording investigation. Uh, it's saying the recording stopped. Uh, I hope it's not, it's not the proceeding that's not being recorded, colleagues. Amanda, can you attend to recording that? Recording in progress. Okay, thank you. Now it tells me that you are recording the proceedings. Certainly, the issue that I wanted to raise was around that we asked the department for to finish the five forensic investigations conducted by various laws and accounting firms on this program. We have raised this because we've seen that this is the project that has been uh, responsible for the major qualifications for the department. That's why we had concern because the AG has consistently over the financial years raised some very adverse matters when it comes to this program. That's the reason why we ask the department to finish us with the five forensic investigations conducted by the various law and accounting firms on this program. We further requested the department to specify the costs incurred in commission, commissioning those reports, as well as the action plans to implement the report's recommendations including also the steps that uh, 
has been taken because one will be in particular refer to the so-called NMS report that was very precise. It's a forensic report that says criminal charges must be pressed against those who are found of wrongdoing. And so we want to know the progress to understand the case numbers on the cases that has been opened in this regard. But to our disappointment and concern in this regard, uh, Deputy Minister Papela, the department has merely finished us with a rehash of the slide presented, presented on the meeting of the 27th of November, 2020. Is this meeting of the 27th of November, 2020, which the DG in the meeting of the 22nd of April claimed not to have heard us what we said at that meeting? Then to our disappointment as we go through the, the, uh, the presentation, we're only seeing a rehash of the slide presented during the meeting of the 27th of November, 2020. I, for one, am seated with that slide, with that presentation for the 27th November, it's same thing with the colleagues. In fact, I see the other colleagues also seated with all the presentation that we've ever received on this program. Our request relating to the actual copies of the forensic report has once again been disregarded. And under the circumstances, it's the feeling of the committee that uh, as a committee, we don't have any other options but to consider launching action in terms of the powers, privilege, and immunities of parliament and provincial legislature acts. I should emphasize this and say this again, that this non-compliance by the department is tantamount to a deliberate effort to hinder the committee from conducting its work. Finally, we have also asked the department to submit a list of all agrarian projects in the country, their end value, and where they are located. We raised that because we were also going for oversight, because we wanted to see, had this information been submitted to us by the 29th of April, like we went to Northwest during the first week of May, we could have then located this project because this is what we wanted to do, to, over, to do oversight on those projects. The other issues that we asked for was the names of the beneficiaries, as well as the return on investment, whether the department has derived any value for money on this project and whether these projects are also sustainable. That we're also going to, 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 to witness that as and when we were doing an oversight. But by which that such information was not uh, received on time, we went to Northwest on oversight. We couldn't conduct that oversight based on those reasons that the information was not yet submitted to us as we had to plan the oversight. What is also concerning colleagues, we also received a list of only 14 projects located in various municipalities in only these uh, four provinces. That's the Eastern Cape, KwaZulu Natal, Mpumalanga, and Northwest. The names and description of this project were also provided as well as the indicative budget allocation. However, if one goes through the presentation that we are going to receive today, it indicates that instead of the list of 14 projects, it indicates that there are 36 projects funded by the department in seven provinces, not the four provinces as per the submitted list. To us, this suggests that the information previously submitted if it was not for malicious compliance purposes, I don't know what was it for. The question of whether these projects are yielding a return on the millions invested in them also remains um, outstanding. So having said that, I hope as and when you do your presentations, DG, you'll be able to also talk to these issues that one is raising as a concern.
over to you, Deputy Minister, if you want to say something before the DG can take lead of the presentation. Thank you, Chairperson. And uh, yes, I was listening to your comments in the opening remarks about not being satisfied already with the presentation that is coming before. Uh, I'll just explain one thing as I do my, my opening remarks. Indeed, the portfolio committee has been requesting an update on various matters related to the CWP. Uh, and in particular, the portfolio committee requested the department to provide reasons for not submitting information as previously asked. Following the previous meetings of the portfolio committee on the 22nd April that the chair you are also pointing out, the department conducted a thorough review of all information previously requested by and submitted to the portfolio committee. It was found that almost all information requested was provided, but I, I am now listening to you to say, if it is what is in the presentation, it means there's no information that has been submitted, but according to the department, it was. The only possible exception, obviously, was the actual forensic reports that you say there's none uh, um, that was submitted uh, as requested. So the DJ has just briefed, and, uh, and I think you'll also explain it when she, she, she speaks and introducing the the team, that uh, some of the forensics reports have not yet been finalized and there are disciplinary issues that will arise out of this particular forensics reports. So that's the, the challenge that the department has uh, for now that uh, if they submit them as they are, and then yet they are not yet finalized towards disciplinary processes, obviously the information will then compromise or disadvantage whoever is pointed out in the in the in the in the in the, in the in the reports themselves well with the department again on the 27 april 21 submitted detailed information on matters deemed outstanding by the committee and then the letter was sent to you with all the 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 the, the, the tables in terms of that i'm not sure if you have, you have seen it uh, chair uh, which uh, the letter was sent to yourself by the dg and then with that particular table of contents and uh, a spreadsheet that then begins to details. So that spreadsheet, I think when they present, uh, probably they might also screen it and then speak uh, on it as, as, as they, they continue to present. So for the summary, obviously we'll give the progress on implementation matters raised in forensic reports, save, save that uh, there's no submission due to the reasons given. Progress on implementation of matters raised by the Auditor General of South Africa. Uh, it will be in the presentation. The CWP financial report, including an update on clearing of the CWP suspense account, it is covered in the report. And a detailed report on agrarian projects. But as we said that they are only pointing at 14 of those projects in the four provinces. And then you wanted a full, full, probably there will be an explanation why only these four provinces and not the entire. The department has also made good progress in addressing deficiencies and concerns raised in forensics reports and by the Auditor General, and we are confident that material irregularities re related to the 1st April 2018 to 31st March 2021 contract period will be resolved in the current financial year. We are working with the Auditor General to address one material irregularity relating to the 1st April 2014 to 31st March 2018 contract period. It will also be given in a fuller context. Therefore, the department in April 2021 started a detailed audit of all agrarian expenditure and assets. Side visits to confirm expenditure claim by the NPOs are underway. This process will be completed before the expiry of the current NPO contracts, which is the 30th September 2021. We are just left with two months, uh, so that then we could then, then conclude on this. So there's the team there for uh, chair is here. Uh, that will then be presenting uh, Mr. Panki Matomela, uh, the Chief Director, CWP Implementation, and then on the Agrarian uh, Revolution, Mr. Lita Tuaku, uh, the Director Agrarian. 
and then all supported. But they, they obviously, maybe before they can come on the floor, the DG can then expantiate in terms of the issues that we have raised as not happy, uh, as is in the uh, report that is going to be tabled before the committee. And, and my apology for not greeting uh, all honorable members of parliament present and also our traditional leaders led by Mema Mshawili uh, also present and also from the provinces. Uh, so Chair, maybe then allow for the DG to explain on the forensic and then other issues that you are raising before the presentation of the report. Thank you very much. Can mute your microphone, DM Wapela, so that the DG can switch your ears on. Thank you very much, I've done. Thank you. Over to you, DG. Facing the other way now. Good evening, Honorable Chairperson. I hope you can see me. My camera has switched to the other way. So, my. Uh, you are using two gadgets. There's an echo that is disrupting us to hear you properly. No, Chair, I'm only using one gadget. Let me just make sure my other ones are completely off. Apologies for that. So good evening, Honorable Chairperson, and good evening to the Honorable Members within the committee. And I also greet our Deputy Minister, and I greet all the, the colleagues um, and the officials of the department. Uh, Chairperson, uh, we firstly thank the committee for the opportunity uh, for us to come and present this, this evening. And as outlined by our Deputy Minister Chairperson, we have, um, to the best of our knowledge and abilities, uh, Chair, um, try to respond uh, to all the queries as raised by the portfolio committee. Uh, and Chair, the, the only uh, document that we have not submitted is the actual report on the forensics, uh, which were undertaken over a period. And you will see in, the, in our submission for our presentation, uh, the periods that are actually covered in each of the forensic reports and these also covered the costs uh, of each uh, investigation that was undertaken. Uh, Chairperson, and the, the only rationale or reason uh, for us not providing the report sooner, uh, we've always had the intention to do so, was the impact or the implication that we thought it would have on our disciplinary cases, um, which are excuse me, which are also underway at the moment. Uh, and Chair, um, if there are any other uh, reports that are then indeed uh, required, um, as a department, we are really uh, very happy uh, to provide any of the other reports. Uh, so I am trusting Chairperson that through the meeting of this evening, that if there are any other points that we need to clarify, Within our presentation, I do have the team here with me. I'm joined by persons that have been in the CWP uh, area for uh, quite a substantial time. Uh, so Dr. Funky would then be here to assist us in, in actually presenting. And I'm also joined um, by the director who's also responsible for the, the aquarium project. Uh, so I'm hoping that they will be able to assist with all questions um, that will be brought to the fore uh, by the committee. Uh, Chair, I'm also joined um, by the DDG who's acting in the CWP program, um, Mr. Pretorius, and he can also then assist us with all the financial related questions. 
uh, that may arise in relation to the, the programs and the projects within the CWP. So thank you so much, Chairperson, and with your permission, um, we would like to proceed with our presentation. Who's presenting, if I may ask? Uh, Frankie Matomela is presenting for us, Chairperson. Can you do that and then you introduce yourself and tell us what do you do in the department? Because I'm only seeing Banky M. I don't know what is that on there. Is possible? Are you able to also rename your gadget? Good, good. Is, day. is Banky your surname? No, Banky is my is my name, Chairperson. Mm. Mm. Yes. Uh, my name is Matomel. Yes, you do that, rename the gadget, ne? You see, the DM is written, Obet Babela. I, I can see this honorable uh, LNS piece. Andile Sokuman, I know it's Andile. Your DG is Avril Williamson. So I want you to do the same. Uh Honorable really? Chair, let me confess. To, let me confess to my inability to manipulate the pros, the, the digital capacity at this moment. Uh, it is not intentional. I just it's, my, it's not too many times that I use Zoom, and uh, I will not be able to manipulate it uh, quick enough to say to save the, the the portfolio committee time. My apologies. You can proceed. Thank you, Chair. Then, then you will say, I'm sorry, and so I'm this, I hold this position in the department so that the members must write your name down and sign him. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Chairperson. Honorable members, um, let me greet all of you including the chairperson, the minister, traditional leader present, my uh, DG, DDG, and my colleagues. Uh, and I request permission to share the presentation that uh, I'm going to go through, chairperson. Uh, Is it, is it visible, Chairperson? Uh, as I proceed, let me begin by saying that we have structured the presentation, Chairperson, to cover the overview, to cover the overview, which basically gives a brief and a succinct explanation of what CWP is about. And I don't agree. I won't allow you to do that. Okay. Focus okay. on responding to our questions as asked, because Thank we you. know what CWP is now. Okay. You That's know what we I know what CWP is. Yes. Just to... get just get into the gist of the matters in response to our question. We have dealt with this matter. If you have heard me through my opening remarks on several, okay. there's nobody who doesn't know what CWP is now. We are meet them. I am I am on slide number 13, Chairperson, which deals yes. with forensic investigation. You see, you see that's I'm, why if you, if you had me in my preamble, I raised this because it's a concern. Same thing that we have been seeing, recycling of information, maybe because it's not you who did the presentation in the first place. 
but that's what we are all concerned as committee members. Same information being recycled to us time and again. That's the issue. Instead of you being direct to the issues as we've raised with you. So you are starting on slide 14. You can see that you wasted most of your paper and time and image from one to 13 slides that we must discard. Start from 14. Proceed. Slide 14 shares the, the, the forensic investigations that have been taken over the, over the years. There are three key ones that have been undertaken as indicated in the slide. One was undertaken by Segele Kabiso in 2015-16 financial year. And I think the amount there was 800. 800,000. There was another one by Deloitte and Tooch, which cost 7 million rands. And there was another one by MNS attorneys, which uh, cost uh, about 8.5. In total, Chairperson, the information provided amounts to 16.8 million rands. This was the mandate that was given to um, the initial forensic investigation number one. Um, and the mandate was for them to investigate the procurement process followed to select and award tenders to the implementing agents for CWP. And the progress uh, for that was that Auditor General uh, and High Court pro pronounced on the matter uh, and that the, the outcome has been that we have seven officials that have been charged with misconduct flow, following this forensic investigation. With regard to inf uh, forensic investigation number two, the mandate was uh, to perform a detailed analysis on project management fees by IA with a view to identifying inconsistencies and trends uh, regarding the invoicing of the department by, by for PMCs. And then there was also a need to engage them uh, on review and analysis of payment of batches, identification, and identification of irregular expenditure. So this, the other, the other one was the verification of the completeness of the CWP asset register, which has always been giving problems with the Auditor General. Here, Jefferson, we are dealing with the findings, the recommendations and the status with regard to what was done with regard to those recommendations coming out of each of those forensic bodies. With regard to the issue of uh, uh, asset management, uh, the recommendation was that the department needs to develop an asset management policy. We can report that the asset management policy has since been developed and the issues raised by the editor general relating to definition and recognition of criteria which delineates between assets and inventory has been, has been uh, completed. Physical verification of assets has been undertaken also, which is this specifically with another recommendation for the 2020 financial year that has not been done due largely to the inability of uh, colleagues to reach uh, CWP size due to COVID. Uh, but we have the, a service provider has since been appointed um, and physical verification officially is going to begin. The pilot has started, is starting today and to, uh, uh, starting this week in Bella Bella uh, and the official kickoff for a fully fledged verification process is scheduled for the 16th of July. With regard to the processing of payments, I think the department has been able to exercise stricter, con stricter control as recommended by developing a checklist that uh, enables the the verification and validation process um, with regard to 
submitting of invoices, uh, and engagements with NPOs are undertaken, and NPOs have been very cooperative with regard to ensuring that the process becomes successful. With regard to the CWP MIS, uh, there was a recommendation that management must invest, investigate internal and external, externally, uh, look into issues of automation so that interfaces with especially home affairs is possible. The department is working, working with CETA in a partnership to try and develop a, to, to a CWP, a web-based application that can enable these, uh, these interfaces. There is in the interim arrangements that have been established for the verification of CWMIS against the Department of Public Service and Administration as well as against SASA database with SASA specifically was intended to affect double DP uh, with DPSA to ensure that uh, there are no participants that are in personal that are in the CWP database. With regards to the home affairs interface, there's an arrangement currently where upon our department it does a data dump with the, department, the expanded public works program which then gives us an exception report that gives an indication as to the status of participants, whether they are dead or they're still alive. With regards to forensic investigation number three, the mandate was uh, flowing specifically from the Auditor General as well as the forensic audit was with regard to the payment to deceased participants. I've already made alluded to some measures that have been put in place to mitigate against that, but I'm, I'm, uh, the same applies to personal participants. Project management fees, uh, fees not supported prior to period 2014 and 2018, uh, as well as project management fees not supported uh, for the current year in 2018-2019. Overpayment on, on project fees was the finding. The recommendation was that a total of 39,714 had been paid. Uh, and in terms of dealing with those issues, what the department has done is was work, uh, undertook some work to engage NPOs with the intention to ensure compliance. Uh, NPOs have been submitting. In certain instances, they have been resubmitting um, invoices that were previously uh, submitted. In certain instances, they're uh, um, submitting invoices that have been requested for purposes of verification and reconciling um, what was paid uh, and monies that was were transferred to them. Uh, with regard to the consequence management uh, recommendation, uh, the accounting officer has already acted. Six officials have already been suspended based on the forensic investigations. Uh, and this action is currently uh, being contemplated against some of these uh, affected. The payment of deceased participants Recovery processes have, have, have been established um, uh, in instances where there has been a, a realization that uh, a realization that uh, the NPO has not done that which was meant to be done. Consequence managements have been brought to bear, and some of those amounts have been recovered. In instances where NPOs have been found uh, not to have paid deceased participants, where they, they are, they are, they are, uh, uh, those participants, those payments would, would be cleared. Uh, the same applies to the issues of PERSA. There is a, a, a rundown on how much has been recovered down in the presentation that would give us an indication as to how much how much how much money was uh, recovered. With regard to forensic investigation number three, specifically with the issue of non-compliance with the VET Act, uh, there's work in progress there. There's a discussion that are currently underway with SARS that have been broadened to also include the verification 
and validation processes relating to compliance with the SARS Act. Um, the initial engagements of uh, the SARS colleagues uh, have, have requested that we allow them to assess the extent to which the SARS Act allows them to help us and ensure interfaces with their systems for fair proposals of certification. Uh, with regard to criminal activities, the following slide does indicate um, uh, what has happened so far. Following allegations of corruption and related offenses, our corruption unit has reported that uh, there are matters that are now with the SIU um, and there are 14 criminal cases of fraud were opened and all over to the commercial crimes court. Uh, the focus of the investigation was mainly on four of the 12 municipalities of the Northern Cape. Um, and the, the, the unit is also recommending that uh, consideration is given to engaging a special investigation unit, uh, which would require a presidential proclamation. In slide 24, Chairperson, we are trying to show the amounts that were identified with regard, for example, to the payment of personal participants. The Auditor General identified an amount of 4.7 million. Um, and then out of that, the department was cleared 2.2 and recouped 2.5 million uh, from, from NPOs. With regard to deceased participants, uh, the amount that was identified was 581, 479 was cleared, and 101 was uh, recouped from, from, uh, from the NPOs. In total, 5.2 million has been recouped as a result of that exercise. From investigation number three, Persal, I had identified uh, uh, the, 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 the forensic audit had identified 7.1 million, 1.2 was cleared, and 5.2 was recouped. The same applies to deceased participants, 448,000, 420 was uh, cleared, and 2.7 was recouped, amounting to 7.6 million in total. Chairperson, that for me deals with some of, especially the key issues that you wanted to, uh, were interested in with regards to the Auditor General as well as the forensic audits. Thank you very much for listening. Okay, thank you for the presentation who's dealing with the agrarian revolution project? Let me ask. Mr. Lita Tuak. So? Mr. Chairperson, it's Lita Tuak. Is the person on the platform? Yes, Chairperson, I'm here. Good evening. You can't rename your gadget as well. I've, it doesn't give me options. I've been trying, but the, the full name is Lita. The same name is Twaku. T-W-A-K-U. After this meeting, you must ask your DG and your other colleagues how do they do it. Proceed. Tell us what do you do in the department first? Uh, Chairperson, my name is Lita Twaku. I'm the director uh, responsible for agrarian. Uh, started sometime this year uh, in June, uh, permanently on that position. Of course, I was involved in agrarian before, before I was uh, given that responsibility because there was no a focused person on agrarian, but now there's two of us that have been appointed to look after the agrarian revolution. Can we see you, Chair? 
Can we see him? You will tell me what needs to happen. It's me, sir. I'm trying to. Yes. Uh, I'm going to load the presentation. Oh, my light is not that much bright. Yeah. Why sit in the dark knowing that you are coming to the meeting? <laughs> no, I'm not in the dark chair. There is a light on top of me. It's just that maybe it's not that much bright. Mm. Proceed. Just wanted to see if you can see my screen, Chair. See it. You can see it. Yeah, Chair, I won't go to the background. I'll just go straight to the issues you raised. In terms of the number of projects that we are having of agrarian, there are 36 projects in total. And also they are, they are implemented in seven provinces, um, in 23 districts within the country and 26 municipalities. Uh, the first slide that is showing there, it shows uh, the province, the district, the municipality, and the number of projects in each of the municipality and the focus of the projects and the traditional authority areas that are benefiting uh, in terms of those projects. Um, for Jokabi, for instance, we have uh, five projects in same municipality, which is the most rural municipality in that district. Um, then we have two sheep production projects, um, and then we have three vegetable production, and then we have one another uh, vegetable production in another municipality in Elundi municipality, which is also the Jokabi district. We, we The benefiting uh, traditional authorities chair have listed there. Uh, under saying who is Shubi, but for Kwama Vunje, Nimane, traditional authorities, and also uh, for Elundini, we've got Nasa Shubi, traditional authority. And then under Krisani district, we have Another two projects there. Honorable Mpumza, can you mute your microphone, please? It's causing a disruption. Honorable Mpumza, mute your microphone. Proceed. Yeah, under Chris Anicha, we have two projects in Insigaye, two municipality, one of which is vegetable production for Munuzo traditional authority area and the sheep production uh, for Mchenyane. And then OR Tambo, we have uh, in King Sabata Dalinja by grain production under the Kebe Tribal Authority. And all these uh, pro the projects, they are implemented by the Southern African Youth Movement, which is called SAYM. That is an NPO that is also implementing CWP uh, in those provinces. And then for Alfred Zo, we have one, pro we have project there uh, implemented by Temple Electric Development in Mzimvubu, which is including 14 villages uh, with, which are within the traditional authority areas of uh, Ngozi, Makaula, and Fikeni. And there's all mixed vegetables there and also irrigation systems for grain production. That's the focus of those projects there. And in Western Cape, uh, at Twinelands District, we have one project uh, under the Dragonstein municipality. Also it's mixed vegetables, uh, it's in Wellington. Uh, and then 
for the uh, Northwest province, uh, which is there's a project that is implemented there by Sibuka Training and Support Network, which is the NPO uh, within the Bojanala district uh, in Rustenbeck. It's a PIGAR project under Wakwe Nabamahoba Traditional Authority. And then in Free State, we have uh, Sibuka again implementing a project there under the district of Tabomufuzanyane, Malutia Pufong, and uh, the livestock and beef and lamb feedlots under Makolokwe Traditional Authority. In, in Pumalanga, we have three uh, projects, Chepesin, uh, implemented by Chubet Park Youth Outreach Project. Uh, with the district, first one is in Harsband and Kondo Municipality, which is a vegetable tunnel. MAPP under the community administration uh, area there, which is CPA. In Tanzania, we have in Bombela, the chicken and vegetable tunnel project in Sholozi, a community property area, and under the CPA. Also in Gangala district, in Krista municipality, there's farm in the box, which also dealing with sheep production and vegetables. In Machiding village under Ingosi, Mashlang with traditional authority. <clears throat> In Limpopo, uh, we have a project implemented by Jubet Park in Waterbeck District in Mokalakwena, which is focusing also on vegetable tunnels and moringa trees. And then we have in Limpopo again, uh, six projects. Uh, those, all the six projects, they are focusing on goat production. Uh, it's in the Belekumpi municipality under Capricorn and Polokwane East, Polokwane West. And then also the focus of the projects, they're all focusing on good production, uh, six of the projects. And uh, Mupani, we've got Greater Giani, there's a project there, and we're funding, uh, there is a cooperative that we funded also there. Sikukuni, we've got Ifren Mohale, also this good project. And then Vembe District, we've got Collins Chabani and Tulamela Municipality. We have the same good production projects there. And, uh, the traditional authorities uh, listed on the other side. <clears throat> and then Pazulu Natal, we have uh, projects that are implemented by Inziga Foundation in Ugu district, and two in Mozuabandu, and this mixed vegetables under Gosu Jali and Gosu Maki. And Ugu also again in Mzumbe, there are two projects within the traditional authority area of Ngosi Ushinga. This is mixed vegetables and trigger project. Ilembe district in Indre, there's one project which is focusing on ghost project under uh, Guanyu Swa, a traditional authority. And Utukela, we've got in Okashamba municipality in, in, within Tukela district, one project of Pigar project there, which is on phase two now. And then um, Amajuba, Amalangeni, there's one project with mixed vegetables, which is focusing on maize and, and beans. Zululand, Abakulusi, citrus and vegetables uh, under a Mpangisweni traditional authority under the Ngozi Uzondo. In Kanyakude, there's, we have one project in Big Five, which is located in, in, in Shabisa. Uh, it's a mixed vegetables and pineapple. And in Herikwala district, a uh, project implemented by SAYM in three traditional authority areas and that Dr. Ankosazana Zamini Zuma municipality, which is focusing on vegetables and orchard, that is for beef and traditional authority, poultry production for, well, for the Zogutle traditional authority and poultry and goat production for Abantrokwa. So this, is, this slide is just now detailing, um, it, it's a detailed per project. Uh, in terms of uh, what is the objective of the project and also how much have been uh, given to each of the projects, the number of beneficiaries. I heard you chair saying you were also looking for the names of the, of the beneficiaries for each of the projects, which I think that information we can uh, pro will provide to the committee uh, because it's not, it's, we have it in our system we will just generate it and, and, and send it through. But in terms of the completeness of these projects, this one, uh, Chairperson, uh, is just about the, the, the Traditional Council one on ship production, 
which is under Joe Gabi in Senu Municipality, where the objective really is to set up infrastructure to enable farming project within the traditional council area to farm productively with sheep production using intensive animal production methods to enhance uh, breeding and also the agricultural project, uh, which has been set up for, for the purpose of establishing commercial enterprises that would also manage production. So Chair, all these projects, uh, mostly they, they, they are relating to that objective and also those that have not gone through uh, them. But what was uh, given to that project for right was 3.5 million uh, in, in 2019-20 financial year. And then the expenditure for that project was about 3.6 million. The number of beneficiaries are six and the project status is 65% complete. In terms of the sustainability, there is, sorry. In terms of sustainability, we are looking at, at, at ensuring that, of course- can I, can, I, can, I, can I interject you? Yes, sir. You see on the the previous one, the Chair? previous one, the uh -huh. previous slide, the previous slide. Okay, Chair. may I go back to it? Yeah. Look at this project. Don't you see any anomaly? I'm trying to raise it so that you must be mindful of that. Did you proofread this based on the fact that you look at this, uh, the project budget was 3.5, yes. expenditure is 3.6, and then uh, status of the project is 65% complete. The budget is exhausted, even depleted and over spending, and then the status project is 65% complete. And you are not saying anything. You're waiting for us to ask you questions. Chairperson, you don't see that anomaly as you put it to us here. No, I sorry, Chair. I, I, I Unless it is malicious right. compliance that I was talking about, because common sense will dictate to you something is not right here. And you should have put a, a, a note, a footnote to that event. I'm trying to warn you, to caution you as you progress. This is the, some of the things that you are raising. And it's of concern to us, honestly. Proceed. Uh, Chair, we, we we're going to look into that because this one was for the 2019-20 financial year, but also the, the, the one of the challenges what we are reflecting on that we are still in the process of checking what was paid to NPOs and what was the expenditure. So for now, this is what we, we found as the expenditure as we're doing, trying to check what was in the invoices and what was paid to the, to the NPO. And you are happy with that. This is the doing. information that you can bring to us raw as it is without you looking at it. You're just throwing it to us. No, we're not same check because we- And the status to... of the project, because honestly, in all fairness, if you are taking this committee serious, you'll have done something about it. Proceed. This one, Chair, also is for the ship production in Abatkokwa. The project budget there was 4 million and the expenditure was 3.8 uh, million. And there are a number of 20, 22 beneficiaries in the project. And the status as of now is 70% uh, complete. Uh, in terms of the sustainability, it's still the same issue that we are raising that we will have to engage with the uh, Agricultural Farmers Association of South Africa. Uh, that has got to take off agreements with a number of entities, both local and international, for emerging farmers to be able to sell their commodities and, and, and yeah. So those are some of the things that we're looking at in terms of such sustainability for all the projects, Chair. But if I may just go, even this one, Chair, I'll, I'll just, uh, it's the same issue with the first one, which we have the expenditure, which is more than the budget that was uh, allocated, which we are also trying to clean up with the NPOs. And the status there is 40% complete. So we apologize for that. We will continue to just provide and clean this thing with the 
budgets that they are going to get also to finish the projects. It's the same thing with this one from a job club in same in same municipality, which have got uh, an expenditure of one went to with a budget which was one million, and this data is for one percent complete. Uh, <clears throat> Same thing with this one also, Chair. And then this one also, the, the budget on this one also from Elundi was 1 million and the expenditure was 950 with 25 beneficiaries. This project status of complete. Capacity. Complete. Sorry to interject and sound like I'm disrupting your meeting. Yeah, I can understand your frustration. Now, Chairperson, I think that uh, the, the presenters must then go back and fix the, yeah. their problems and come back to us properly. Mm. Uh, we are taking this very, very seriously. This is the yes. work of Parliament. And, and here we are uh, uh, doing issues of accountability in terms of the monies of the public. How, how were they spent? So if you come here with one million, and that 950 or come with 1 million with the, with the, with the, with the 100 and with, with the 1 million 169 expenditure. Uh, the public is not going to be convinced that you are spending their money correctly, unfortunately. And if you come like this as, 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 as casual as this, what does it say to, to the people that are, uh, uh, are waiting for this information. So, so I do think that uh, they they must take themselves seriously before they take the committee seriously. Thank you, Chair. What is worse, there's a situation where in the money is overspent. You are told project status forty percent complete. What is forty percent complete? Honestly, that's where monies have been spent. And then this report is being brought to us raw as it is. Honestly, it's very frustrating. I think, Chair, sorry, if, Can, if you- There's a proposal, yeah, colleagues. Please. Can I get takers, please? On the Chair. proposal. Chair. Yes, I'm trying to check. Your hand is not up on the system. Kalipi, what's wrong? It's your okay. microphone, that's all. Okay. Can I get the, the colleagues' feelings on this matters? Yes, it's Honorable Kalipi. Who wants to also want to talk on this matters? There was a proposal, Kalipi. Then it will be brink, yeah, on that order. Sure. Yeah. Yes, Chair. I, Can you I, remove I, your presentation on the screen, please? I want to see the members now. Where's Honorable Mpumza to talk to you, Honorable Mkalipi, about your tax city? <laughs> <laughs> it's that there's no there's a lot changing here. <laughs> okay. I, yes. I, I, I Can you the... remove the presentation from the whole screen? Thank you. So that I want to see Honorable Mkalip. Yes. Proceed, Honorable Mkalip. Yes, Chair. I just want to second the proposal, but also to say that on your opening remarks, Chairperson, even the, the DM also commented on your pro on your opening remarks, uh, speaking on behalf of the committee to say that you are so unsatisfactory about this issue that has been coming to this committee. And again, I think that we need to get a very proper explanation, especially from the DG. Why are we taking, taken for granted by the department? It can be, this is a fourth meeting, if it's not a fifth meeting about the very same issue of the community work programs. So it can be that officials of the department come here unprepared. It can be that officials of the department can prepare presentation and is not checked by the DG and satisfy herself to say that no, now the quality of the presentation is the one that the committee is looking for. 
So we need a serious explanation as well as chair to say that how are we going to go forward as we were also mentioning during your opening remarks that in fact you are coming here we are not even sure if we are going to get what you want to to get as a community in order for us to do our oversight i have so many questions about the last presentation but now i'm very discouraged about what we have also pinpointing to oh, mr Lita. and also it seems as if now he didn't do his a uh, he didn't double check his presentation before he came to this committee. And I begin to ask myself, who is the supervisor of Mr. Lita? Because my understanding, if he has prepared the presentation to this committee, someone could have double check his work before the presentation. And I don't know Jay, why we have to accept this and again and again and again, as if we are bored. We are in recess for argument's sake, but we said because there are so many issues that need to be tackled especially this issue which has been here since last year. And it seems as if we are not going to get it right if we are not going to put our foot down. As we we're also mentioning that no, now we need to use the powers that we have as a community because it seems as if no one wants to take us serious. Maybe we become a joke in this committee. I don't know, Chair, I really don't know. So I propose that on top of the proposal that was suggested in this committee, we must get a clear explanation. And I'm very happy that the DM is here. The DM is here and in his opening remarks, he said, no, most of the things that the committee, when the chair was opening this meeting has been sent to the committee, but the essence of the matter was that the quality, the quality of the presentation, that's what we did last time. We said the presenter must go because we're not satisfied. Again, we're being given a presentation that is not even logic, does not even give us a way forward in terms of, of to do our work. So I really need that explanation from the department, even if it's not the DG, the one that's supposed to supervise uh, Mr. Lita in terms of this uh, program that is supposed to implement the chairperson. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Mkalipi. Honorable Brink will be followed by Honorable The record followed by Honorable um, Bumza. Who's Peter Pretorius? Can I ask who's Peter Pretorius? Evening, Che. Um, I am the acting DDG for CWP. So, its members, now you will have your opportunity. You can lower your hand in the meantime. Then, when it's time for responses, I will note you. Okay. Thank you for that. Honorable Brink. Uh, thank you, Chair. I just want uh, clarity. Um, the, the proposal by Honorable Thez, uh, Theza is uh, uh, that, we, that we send the department back to do their work properly uh, and present at the next meeting. Do I understand that proposal correctly, Chair? I just want to confirm that. I should think it's in relation to the agrarian revolution documents. Uh, to say okay. they need to go uh, back uh, because. Uh, Hello? Just Honorable those documents. I'm battling to hear you. Sorry, Chair, I'm going to switch off my, my video. Uh, okay. I, I, I just, in order to speak to the Honorable Member's uh, proposal, I just need to understand. Um, is, is he saying that we must let the department go back and improve upon their presentation in respect of the agrarian revolution, and then we proceed? Is, is that the, the proposal, Chairperson? I think this is what you were saying to say, this report is, it is it's unacceptable. I heard him saying that because it's like this report was just prepared for malicious compliance to be submitted okay. to us, it lacks details. And okay. then it doesn't even show remedial action, what is going to happen to say to throw, is being thrown on our faces. That's what I need to say that. They want this information, we are giving it to them, raw is it, as it is without any effort or attempt to provide remedial action. I think uh, chairperson, so that that's is- what, a... That was my understanding. 
Yes. That is a fair comment and that is a good suggestion, a proposal. Um, I, I would just then add that um, before we resolve that, we get an acknowledgement uh, from the DG uh, or from the, the official responsible that they understand what we expect of them uh, so that they, you know, they don't wonder what is, uh, what is going on and what must they present so that they, we have on the record just a positive confirmation that everybody's on the same page as to what exactly this committee expects at the next meeting. Um, and, and maybe that, uh, that goes with, with the previous suggestion. Thank you, Chair. Now it's noted, I'll, I'll, I'll say what needs to happen. You seem to be in agreement, but it's on the second presentation. The other one was still going to engage on it, the first one. Can I get somebody? It's Honorable Direk who's gonna be followed by Honorable Pumza. Uh, thank you, Chair. You are assisting on how this report must look like as well. Proceed. Yes, Chair. It's, it is so frustrating. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Chair, I'm saying it is so frustrating and worrisome to see the manner at which the department is responding and is submitting the presentations to us. And the question is, how long is it going to be like this, whereby we'll have to return the department every now and then to go and fix their issues? I believe that uh, when you are appointed as a DDG or DG, you are expected to be one of the best of the best in the institution. But if a DG or DDG or chief director is brave enough to send us such information, then it shows that there's a lack of administrative uh, leadership. Hence, we'll have these challenges that we are having. I believe at some stage as the committee, we need to act. We can't be sending people back each and every time. At some stage, one of them must take responsibility. The one who's responsible for the department must account to us. The DG must account to say, how did the report or that presentation comes to the committee they, in the manner that it is? Did the DG do his her, her job in terms of looking at the document that are submitted to the committee? If the DG did, when, he, when she saw the nature of the presentation that was sent to us, what did the DG do? We can't be sending, yes, I accept that we must send them back to go and fix that report, but someone must also account for the state of the report that was sent to us. It can't be business as usual each and every time, whereby people will just do as they wish and they know that we'll send them back to go and correct. At some stage as the committee, we must also exercise our authority. People must start to take the committee service. But if we are going to be just like this, we just be nice to all of them, no, go back, no, do this. If, if these people who submitted this report are getting salaries and their salaries is equal to the job that they are giving, that, that they got. But if their work is not in terms of their salary, then it's a challenge. Uh, I, I, I support the proposal by Honorable Treza, but adding that, a chair, someone where are you, Honorable Whip? Thank where you, chair, the, chair. Honorable Whip, where are you? I'm in Odinganja. I'm at home, chair. We have, we have electricity problem, chair, since uh, Sunday. They have cut, uh, they've stole the cable, so we are in the dark. Okay, makes okay, sense. Uh, Honorable Mpumza. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and uh, good evening. At least Chair. one can see you. Does it mean plenty of chickens there, somewhere there? <laughs> no, it's not the place of chicken. <laughs> I'm coming, I'm coming. I think uh, perhaps uh, honorable members who spoke before me, uh, they had covered a number of areas, but it's just to indicate that uh, why, why, why members of the committee are worried about uh, this uh, format of reporting that seems to be problematic, where we are seeing some discrepancies around uh, the figures that are presented here, that perhaps it would be important that the department goes back and process this report. 
um, uh, so that uh, the report uh, is indeed uh, of a standard that is acceptable to the committee. In particular, we, 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 Mr. Litado, what, 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 what throws the committee and us astray is the fact that you are saying that uh, the project is 40% complete. And we begin to ask, what do you mean that that, that kind of reporting? Uh, at some time, perhaps uh, uh, your colleagues will tell you, a report of this nature is not the first time that you are sending it back. Uh, this thing of bringing a report to say that uh, the report is in progress and then it's 40%, it's very, very vague indeed uh, to say, how can a project be complete when it is at 40%? Uh, uh, these are matters that perhaps you begin to be looking at that when you are actually providing that report. The report must be succinct and be very accurate uh, so that we are in a position to engage in such a report. Um, I think uh, um, honorable members have indicated that uh, perhaps that report needs to go back so that uh, it is processed and uh, resubmitted, uh, being in a better format, in a better way. Thanks, Chair. Yes, I I think the 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 recommendation by. Honorable Direco, proposal, it covers most of all, all of you. And then oh, this Honorable Keza, I think this Honorable Keza was the proposal. Having listened to the other colleagues, you might want to amplify before I will conclude on the matter. Over to you, Honorable Keza. No, Chair, I was, I was uh, sorry about my, my, my video. Uh, you, I was proposing this on the basis that uh, you have a situation where you are saying that you have uh, 1 million, right? And then you have one, one uh, uh, Over million a million has been spent. Over a million expend expenditure. Then you, you yes. talk about completion of the project. So this does not uh, correlate that you talk about the completion of the project as saying that it's at 40% unless there's something that we're missing in terms of mathematics. So if the, pro, if, if the, the presentation is not, is not completed, how does it, or is not thoroughly processed at a departmental level, how does it even make it here? Because there are questions that we would then have to ask uh, if this is at 40% and the money uh, uh, saying that is over a million and the budget being a million, what, 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 what informed the, the percentage, uh, whereas the expenditure is at that, so that we can be uh, in, in, in one accord here. Uh, uh, it's quite confusing and it's, uh, uh, it, it's not uh, quite. And, and the other issue is that we are not told about the details. Maybe they should go back and then focus on the details uh, in terms of uh, uh, how, how many active cases and how far are those active cases in terms of uh, uh, consequence management and 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 disciplinary processes and 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 and, and all the, uh, and stuff like that? So 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 maybe they they would need to to then uh, focus on that so that when they come to the committee they know as as I know this committee uh, that they will they will they will be held to account. Thank you very much. Oh oh okay, you are. Honorable Mkalipi, over to you now. Yes, Chair. No, I concur, fully, I concur fully with what my colleagues are saying. You know, Chair, if you are going to allow these things to continue to happen, it means that you are failing to our duty as Honorable Director was mm -hmm. as fact as well. We must not allow this madness to happen under our watch, Chairperson. You know, Chairperson, let me just say something. And I don't know if Dr. Uh, Dao is here in this meeting. You see, Chairperson- He's on leave. He's on leave, unfortunately, but I'm sure the DDG will also uh, uh, communicate with him. 
because I raised this thing sharply with him. Last week, it was not even the first time. There is a matter from a gentleman by the name of Ndiakoro, and Dr. Tao referred me to the DTG uh, uh, to, to deal with this matter. We dealt with this matter with the DTG because they were victimizing that person who's working in Western Cape in this program. So this matter does not go away. This gentleman keeps on writing uh, emails and the department, the officials from the department, they just ignore him because why? Because he's nothing. He's just a mere, mere ordinary person on the street who is crying to be heard about whatever matter he's raising. Or they are being irritated because it does not matter to them. They are very big. I even wrote to Dr. Tao to say that why this matter is not being resolved because it's only just one person. And why I'm raising this matter here, Chair, is because it falls under this uh, 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 program. And also it is uh, the, the Insega Foundation. It's also involved. The one that we were told here in this presentation that they're benefiting from this program. They don't care about, their, about people. I'm talking about P Panky M. I think is the one that was doing the presentation uh, firstly, because it's also mm. here in this uh, email address. And Masaleka, and uh, P.S. Pagi, and Daniels from Insega Foundation, and Katleho from Cox, all those officials, even say Habalala, Shabalala is S. Shabalala and Caroline. Those are the officials that have been uh, uh, a sent email about the matter of a young gen gentleman by the name of Ndiakon. And you know what is also irritating, Chairperson? I even uh, 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 wrote a very strong uh, email uh, responding, asking why this matter is not being resolved, Batunan? Why is it so difficult to attend to one matter, not so many matters? One matter, is it because this person is not important to them? I even told them in that email that I'm going to raise it. Is fortunate enough that we are going to deal with this program in the committee, which is already causing us a headache. It starts there with the officials, with the junior officials who are working in this program, who does not care. As Honorable Director was saying that people are getting paid for undermining the program as such. And then they thought that they can come to this committee and maybe they are used to committee members who does not do their oversight, who are rushing to listen to the department and then that's it. Unfortunately, we are not like that. We know why we are members of parliament and why we ought to do our oversight. So therefore, I would like the, the, the DDG, the one that said want to talk here and then you said, Chair, no, he's going to come late, who is responsible for this program. I'm going to forward to him, these officials that are, I believe that they are accountable to him as well. And they must tell us what, why are they failing to address one concern from one person? And why they are treating this person as if they don't get paid by servicing this person? So therefore, Chairperson, let us not allow this. Let us act now. This matter has been here on our table for a longest time. And then it seems as if they don't, they don't think that we can act on them. So we must, as a committee, to act. Now is high time, Chair. Thanks very much. Thank you, Honorable Mukalib. Um, I've heard all of you colleagues. And honestly, I should say we are concerned. I think we're just going to and fro. This could be our seventh or sixth meeting tonight on the same mat. Honorable Brink, no matter how much you say this is what you want, you are going to get the opposite of what you want. Because even if we are to read on the first report, I'm trying to raise it so that we can deal with that. I initially thought that we were going to deal with the other one and leave the other one. Let me start with the one that was being presented. It's either the information is obsolete. I've seen something in the region where I'm based here, uh, colleagues. They are referring, they're saying in this project is in Tulamela, but they refer to the area that is in Musina. It was even if it was the Almagamishan, this area was initially in, 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 in Mutare prior to the Almagamishan. So I, I'm seeing this because I know the areas. 
so the accuracy of this information that is given to us that gives me a lot of goosebumps. I'm concerned because that might not be the only information that is misleading to start with. To say somebody just did the so-called desktop report to present to the portfolio committee. And like I'm saying, DM Mbapela, I think we are getting tired here yeah, as a committee of being taken for granted. I last time also pleaded, if you don't hear what we are saying, call us, we are available, we'll explain ourselves. Still, when you are given information, the information is incomplete. I'm raising this because uh, on these issues, on the first report itself, that's why I'm gonna couple all this report. Uh, Honorable Mukalipi is even saying the issue that I'm raising on the Hercules, she's seeing certain information in Mpumalanga that is also misleading. So you can see this document was just collected to submit to the committee. And they, we refuse to be treated, to be disrespected the way we are being disrespected in this committee. We are refusing that. Because honestly, we are just being taken for granted. Not that we don't know what to do, and I'm going to say that. And if people have listened to me when I started, I've said that under the circumstances, we'll be compelled to do what we were supposed to do. Uh, because don't you dare think that you are toothless when we are pleading with you because we want these matters to be resolved. You know the CWP program is causing a lot of problems for the department itself. And it's billions and billions of money and they will be fulfilling on our oversight responsibility if we don't address this matter is this portfolio committee. But we cannot be speaking one and the same thing for seven times. It's unacceptable, DG. Because you read your first report, it does not even address the key issues raised in the last meeting. And in the meeting of the 22nd, we raised the same thing to say, this report does not address the issues raised on the meeting of the 29th of November. So it's a trend, it's a process. I don't know whether we're going to be heard as Honorable Direko is saying. And then in essence to us, what we're seeing here, colleagues, is that there's no commitment to address this issue that is facing this program. There's no commitment from the department and somebody must address us to that. And then last time we also asked with regard to the report on the, on the, on the assets. Remember, that's a very serious area that you've been qualified with the AG. And at some point, there was one person who preceded you, Mr. Pretorius, who came here and tell us they were busy with the assets. So, and then what happened to that project? Because it was on record in this meeting, it was told us we are busy because the issue of assets, of the agrarian assets is an area of concern. Where are these assets? Where are they? What is their value? And we also asked in the last meeting of the names of the NPOs, the current one and the, and the previous ones, and the value uh, in relation to the amount with regard to their quarterly trenches to date. And you see what you are seeing in this last presentation, you can see it's a mess because there's something that's not being done. And correctly, then you don't even bother to say you are coming to account with the portfolio committee where in this overspending you just say the project is at 40% and you are not even ashamed to, to, to give a narrative why you just say 40%. What 40% is that when money has been fully spent? And then we've even asked to say you need to tell us the names of these board members and the names of their CEOs, and then you must give us all the names also of the COCTA officials. We know this project is being messed up by former COCTA officials who resigned seeing this loophole in this project. So we even say, you must tell us the names of the CEOs, CEOs of this company. Give us the names also of the COCTA officials who are now CEOs and or managing directors of this non-profit organization. We know they are there. And those are the ones that you can't act on them because some of you, are your colleagues, and those are the ones that you are even giving them inside info. These are disadvantaging all eligible people who should be benefiting from a, a, of this project. We said you must give us the names of all the beneficiaries. 
uh, also meaning those who receive money on behalf of the communities, because we know there's something that's not good getting right in. And we are also, we said, you must give us the names of all the agrarian projects. As I indicated, you gave us the list of, of 14 in four provinces, but your current document that you were presenting to us now is talking about 36 projects in seven provinces. And then we said, you must give us those things and then you must state to us exactly where this project are. But if you will tell me that Amakuya is in Tulamela, but whereas Amakuya is in, in, Musina, in Musina, I've got difficulty with that, whether you also are aware, you are sure where these projects are, unless if it's a desktop thing that you are doing. So we said you must tell us exactly where these projects are and who is benefiting from this project I think you need to tell us the project name within the community, just to say, because here I'm seated with uh, Amakos. If I'm to call now, Inkos uh, Katang is sick, is not well today, uh, the deputy chairperson is acting. Maybe let me ask Inkos Shinga to say of this project that I said, is the chairperson of the house in, in KZN. You'll find him telling me that he's not even aware of this project. That's why we call them because these things are alleged, especially the agrarian uh, revolution projects are alleged to be happening in their area of operation. So these are some of the issues to say, you must tell us who's benefiting or are some people that are taken in the street and we are told this is the community that is benefiting in each community. Because I did this oversight recently in, 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 in Amaguya, where it said this project is, is there. I will have seen it. Somebody must take me and tell me where this project is. So it's happening because we are saying we need this list because we want to go and do oversight and see this sustainability thing that you are, you are raising on your document, which some of them are not there. You tell us 40% and you say sustainability of the project. A project that is at 40%, you have having exhausted the monies at the project that is at 20% as you have indicated in some of their projects. What type of sustainability are you going to refer to? Then the issue, the issue, the other thing last time we asked, give us the model. You keep on telling us when we requested the model is being adopted, is being prepared to be approved by, by cabinet. I asked last time when this presentation was made, is this the approved model by, by, by cabinet? I didn't get any response. And then can we be honestly be fair with us yourself, DDG Pretorius, yourself, DG, and the CFO? Do you really know how to approach the CW governance and financial management issues? So the issue that we are raising here, do you really know? Do you have the ex expertise? If you do, why are you giving us this raw, raw, unprocessed information that is so raw? It's like you're throwing it to our to our to our, to, to, our, to our faces, because from where we are seated is the committee. We are just currently moving in circle. Slides before the committees, you still recycle them to us. So time and again, like the issue of the suspense account and the budget, you, you keep on recycling things. That's why I even told the earlier presenter to say, did you see how you wasted your time? from slide one up to slide 13. You only started your presentation on slide 14. You were just wasting your time because you did nothing. And then the other issue that I feel I need to also address colleagues. You have paid over 16 million. And then we are being told, I don't have a proper word. This craziness that is being told us, unless if it's undermining our intelligence. We know when a forensic investigation is done, all affected officials are contacted. The report won't be finalized without their input. For you to come here and tell us, Uri, uh, we are not sharing because of the official implicate. They know they've been there in that issue. Some of them, you said they are suspended. And this is a document that you received that you've paid over 16 million. And then you don't want to share with us as a committee. I think that's undermining our intelligence, honestly, at this portfolio committee. Uh, and then that, that's the issue that one wanted to, 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 to raise. And we'll still maintain uh, honorable Babella. Those reports have been commissioned. 
they've been handed over. We are a committee of parliament. We deserve to have sight of this, this, this report. And you, can you give us, some of them are not even uh, uh, already this thing that you think that they are there, they are in the public domain, but you come as I will say, formally give us this report, you don't want to give us that report. I think this issue, that's the issue that we feel uh, we, 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 we have got problems here. Because the other issue that I want to raise, did you on record with regard to your statement on the SIU and SARS, with your statements here, are you referring the action that you have taken on the forensic reports or you are just talking about general uh, reports here? Because honestly, on a serious note, we are going to investigate these statements of yours. And if they are not true, like I said in my opening address, I think it's high time we need to take action for people who are misleading uh, 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 the, 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 this, the, the, this committee. Because the other issue, I think you better know, DG yourself, as I said earlier, you know once you are given a forensic report that says open criminal cases and you have not yet done now, it's you who must be charged for not doing that. Uh, because you see, you keep on telling us that you are discussing with SARS, uh, uh, finance, and then can police, maybe it's high time you need to tell us what was the outcome of your meeting? How many charges have been opened? Because it's a criminal DG to hide the crime, uh, especially the one that has been reported in a forensic investigation or any investigation. So we need you, when you come back, you must back this way, presentation with these things that you have done to show us this is the cases that we have opened under the Clinton police station case number, and this is the status of the case. And then the issue with regard to the suspension of officials that you have reported. And this is the report that we want you to give it to us by tomorrow morning by nine. It's a simple thing, which entails to us if you are telling the truth, when did you suspend them? Mention their names. And when did you charge them? And then when did you, and where are they now? And then we want you to give us the details of such official. And then honestly, DG, I think Honorable the, the Director has said a mouthful to say, you need to take us seriously at this committee. And I'm handing over to you to respond to these issues. But like you are saying, you are not going to proceed the manner in which you are. You are hand Mr. Pretorius was up. But I hope I've been eloquent. These are the matters that you need to respond on the issue of the suspension of the officials and the forensic investigations report. Because if you can't do it, we are empowered by as a committee of parliament. We are going to press that charges if you don't want to do that. The law allows us to do that. So give us the report you have commissioned, you have paid over 16 million for those reports. So I don't know why are you able to summarize them. And we have been given reports in this meetings by other institutions, other entities. We got the reports. What is the snag of you not giving us those reports? What is hindering you to give us those reports, DG? Over to you, Mr. Pretorius, and the DG must respond. Minister, Deputy Minister will respond, and then we'll, we'll adjourn this meeting for today. Um, thank you, Chairperson. I'm going to respond to some of the matters, and in particular to the comments made by the committee in relation to the presentation on the agrarian program. And let me just be brutally honest with you, because I think that's probably the easiest way to deal with this, is that the comments you are making is 100% correct. But this is exactly the information available to management at this very point in time. So six months ago, we were not even able to get a consolidated single report on exactly what are the state of all the agrarian projects. Um, to date, with the information available to us, we indeed have cases where the budget has been fully spent, but the NPO would indicate that the project is only 40 or 50 or 60 percent complete. In other words, that more money is needed to actually complete the original objective of the project. So you are 100% correct, that is extremely concerning. And this is exactly the information that has been presented to management as well, which is why um, two months ago, we decided to 
actually change the structure of and the responsibilities of people in the um, CWP branch, because there was no single person responsible for agrarian. It was sort of an add on to a number of officials um, core responsibilities. And therefore we now have two employees that are dedicated to agrarian only. And their task is to do a detailed audit of every project, first a desktop exercise, and then they must visit the actual um, sites, so the actual um, projects. Um, this will be combined with the asset verification process. Um, not only will we have to confirm exactly what is going on on the ground, I have spoken to at least one traditional leader, where if you speak to the traditional leader and you listen to the NPO, you get two completely different stories. So you're 100% correct. This is extremely frustrating and it definitely cannot be left like this. But the information we've presented to you is the information available to us right now. And it shows that there's a lot of work that needs to be done in terms of the agrarian project. And the two officials have started that work by compiling a detailed dossier on each and every one of the projects. Um, some of them they've already visited and some of them have to be revisited since some of the assets could not be found, which means that this is an ongoing process. It's not that we have any intention of hiding anything from the portfolio committee, but the information we've presented to you on agrarian is what's available now. And we fully agree with you that this is concerned. And therefore the process is ongoing to make sure that we get accurate information and that we hold the NPOs accountable in those cases where they have actually spent the full budget but not completed the project. Um, so that process is definitely happening. And in the same way that we dealt with the suspense account, the first time that we encountered the suspense account at the beginning of last year, it was 287 million rand of monies paid to NPOs that has not been accounted for. So the work that has been done um, over the past year uh, has brought this down from 287 million to 61 million. So we're not there yet. We are not at zero where we should be, but it shows that there's definitely a commitment from management to deal with these matters. And you are correct when you say that the CWP is plagued with a number of problems. And I think there's a whole history behind this and I won't be the appropriate person to speak to that. I've only been in the department for a short period of time. Um, but we are dealing with these issues and we are dealing with them one at a time where we can or a lot of them together where we can. Um, and it's not an easy task, but it doesn't mean we will not deal with all the issues. Um, so I think, Chair, we did provide a list of all the board members and CEOs of all the NPOs. Um, I wouldn't know if any of them are former employees of, of COCTA, but I can certainly find out if some of them are. Um, as far as the beneficiaries are concerned, the beneficiaries listed on the slides are actually the, the CWP participants um, that participate in the particular project. They're supposed to be a cooperative established for most of these projects, and it would be fairly easy to then see in the cooperative who are the actual beneficiaries. Um, the, the model that you mentioned, the previous model that was being developed um, has been uh, we can say scrapped. Um, it is clear that our initial thinking around how we need to change the CWP will not have a significant impact on what the CWP achieves on the ground. So we are dealing with two separate um, groups of issues in the CWP. The one is operational administrative um, and management must deal with that. And that relates to all these issues that we've been talking about now. But the second issue that you have also raised yourself in some of the meetings is the impact of CWP. So is it really useful work? Is the training really having, having an impact? Um, and our minister is very passionate about this particular two areas so that we improve the impact of the CWP and that we improve the impact of training. Because as previously mentioned in, um, by some of the members, is that participants remain in the program. They don't seem to be able to exit the program, which does show that we cannot continue with the program in its current format. Um, so the, the model that was previously proposed and that, um, that was being developed is no longer on the table. We have, I don't wanna say started from scratch. We've already done a lot on the operational side of trying to change how the CWP is implemented. But there's also a lot of work that then still needs to be done to change the impact of the CWP so that we find that participants actually do useful work that benefits the community 
that they receive the kind of training that allows them to exit the program. And they don't remain perpetually in the CWP program because that was also not never the intent of the program. Um, and in this regard, we will be partnering with uh, government entities and a number of other um, government departments to come up with specific work packages in future. Um, but as we said, this process is still being um, finalized and we hope that within the next month or two, we'll be able to present these um, to our minister. Um, so it definitely has not been to cabinet yet, at least not the proposal we're working on now. And then just the, um, the, the matter raised by Honorable Kalipi. Yes, I did see the complaints. We've requested the report from the NPO and we have received a written report from the NPO on this particular matter. And I can forward that report to you tonight so you can see what the NPO says about the particular matter. Um, it's not something that is being ignored, definitely not. Um, we try within our means to respond to every single inquiry, um, bearing in mind that we are a few employees in this um, particular unit and there are 250,000 um, participants, but we do try our best. Uh, the participants are the only reason that the program exists. If we cannot service the participants properly, then we shouldn't exist. So I think that message has gone out very clearly that that's our primary reason for existence as a CWP program is the participants and nothing else. Um, I think I've addressed some of the issues. Um, our apologies for the state of the report on, on, on CWP, but as I said, or on agrarian at least, that is exactly the information available to us. And we fully understand that that information is not acceptable. And we are working very hard on getting proper reports on every single site to make sure that the NPOs, before they, their contracts expire at the end of September, that they account properly for all the projects. Some NPOs and some projects have done pretty well, and there, there are a few that we visited that we agree with what we have what we reported to us. But as you can clearly see, there are others where the money has been spent and the project is set, sitting at 40% or 50%. And we don't just want to trust what the NPO says. We also want to make sure that the traditional leaders and the community agree with the assessment of the state of readiness of the project to be sustainable. Um, I think that was the areas that I wanted to comment on chairperson. Um, we sincerely hope that if we are given a little bit more time that we can at least on the agrarian provide much better information next time. Um, we will obviously now during level four not be able to actually visit sites. But as soon as the level, lockdown level four is over, we will commence our process of visiting sites and putting a proper dossier together for each and every site. Thank you, Chairperson. DG, over to you. Good evening again, Chairperson. I trust I'm audible. Uh, and if yes, you are. Mind if I could please turn my camera off? Um, because you are eating. Because you are eating, we're seeing plates on your table there. I was eating, Chair. I'm done with my dinner. So if Chair doesn't mind, if I can just turn the camera off. What are the reasons for switching it off? Because this thing is live. Uh, the only reason I um, want to switch off chair is because I have to turn my computer around uh, because I'm up to see with uh, an iPad and it's a bit awkward. And also it's impacting on my bandwidth chair with some drops in the discussion. Sort your computer will allow the DM while you are busy sorting it out. Thank you. DM. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairperson. And I think one has been listening to the concerns raised by uh, honorable members. Uh, they are quite deep seated, and I think they should not be ignored. So, what, what the one will then propose? is that we, we, we allow, as we said, that they need to go back and clean up the reports. And then, then 
put proper perspective, accurate information, and then also ensure therefore that they are able to explain uh, on every narrative that is there or whatever the report says, they need to give a bit of additional beef or narration on, 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 on the issues, both on the CWP report and also on the agrarian revolution report. And so in doing so, they also have to maybe engage with the chairpersons of the provinces, national house, uh, provincial houses, to say in Limpopo, these are the areas, and uh, and and then and then then verify whether the the, the the traditional leaders in those areas were informed when these projects were initiated, or they do not know at all, because at the beginning of the start of the agrarian revolution, it was based on an engagement and an agreement with the traditional leaders themselves. And at that point, when they established the sites, uh, they might have just gone uh, the, through the MPOs and the NPOs might not have engaged, or in some maybe they've engaged, I do not know. So if that information can also be included in this project, the traditional leader in the next area was informed, was engaged, and this is the NPO that is involved. Unfortunately, we could not, at the point of the implementation, uh, get some of the, uh, the, the, the NP, NPOs or NGOs that were referred to by the traditional leaders because the department had to then engage with those that it had already appointed. But obviously the emphasis that work with the traditional leaders in those particular areas. So if the report can also then go deeper and say, yes, here we did, here, we found out the NPO did not engage on also as a department, we, we might have done or not done. And then we can then also begin to help the committee. Uh, you, you have already requested that DG probably will answer whether it's doable, that by tomorrow, all those people who are suspended uh, officials, uh, the report needs to come in their names. When were they suspended? Are uh, there any charges opened? And what is the progress on each of them? Because that is the information that the, the committees in parliament do get reports on, unless there's a reason on one or two, uh, if, if, if there's any. And then we are able to quantify on those reasons as to why on these particular ones, there are uh, issues that are subjudicate or whatever the case that might be. But I think, the portfolio committee is entitled to receive any information that it requires from the departments, uh, so long as it's not a classified information. And then the DG, I think it will be at the best to then respond to that particular issue. Uh, and I think we, we, we also said we want to see value for money, whether these projects have any value and what is the return of investment. And Chair, we kept repeating it, and we'll also have to look at that particular issue quite strongly. And, and we'll obviously come back with the model, whether the model has been reviewed or we're starting afresh again. Uh, there seems to be a bit of confusion. And, 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 and because whatever is the model, it has to go back to the cabinet uh, if there's any review conclusion on it. So Chair, I think, let me take the criticisms and then also the the, 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 the strong words that comes from the honorable members of the portfolio committee. I will also myself really come closer uh, to the DG, the DDGs in that particular environment and really prepare thorough for the next submission that comes to parliament and then not in the manner in which it came. So I, and I don't know how what time do you wanna give us, but I was just going to ask that if uh, with the information and the limitation of movements now to go to other provinces and go and see physically. Uh, uh, whatever work has happened, I think uh, some photos that accompanies the visits themselves and what we see on the projects will also be added uh, in, the, in the submission. But where we are not able to do, obviously we're still be relying on, on the information. But I think we ought to engage the provincial officials also of COCTA uh, because they are the ones who must really monitor and ensure that uh, these uh, projects are there, they are sustainable, and they are working or not working. Where there are challenges, 
we need to come back and say, these following projects are failing uh, and, then, and, then, and then that's it. So Chair, I was just going to say maybe the third week of August, uh, I know it's too long from now, but with the practicalities of the two weeks of the hard lockdown now, and, uh, but they will then be doing a lot of work, desktop and then informally uh, telephoning and then also engaging uh, with those people who are on site and so forth. But relying only on the NPOs, it seems like it's not enough because they, they will don't tell the entire story. And I think it's us who must then really work with the provinces to really to see to these projects that they are fulfilled. That will be my comments, Chair, and I think uh, we, we take it that the strong views that have been expressed should not be undermined. Thanks. Okay, DM. I think the issue that I raised in relation to the DG, she must just give us the matters because it's on record that these officials are suspended. So that's the information that they don't, it doesn't need the hard lockdown DM. That's why I say by tomorrow, nine o'clock, we need to see the date of suspension of these officials. Who are they? And when were they suspended? And when were they charged? And where are they now? So we want to understand the details of each suspended official. Isn't that it's on record we've been told that we've been told, we're being told, I think this is the fourth meeting I'm hearing about the suspension of officials. And we both know and understand the disciplinary code and procedures of the public service. It says by when this matter has been, must have been concluded. It's part of our oversight to understand the status, where they were just being told that the officials that don't suspend. You find them, they're sitting at home getting money, they've not even been charged. These are some of the issues that we want to deal with. The other issue, I, I, I must say, DM, like you're saying, you listening to the acting, the DDG, on this issue on the approach of the CWP governance model and the financial management based on what you're saying, because throughout we've been saying, remember when we, we started to do oversight on the department, we were told the model is being revised. Now the DDG is saying now hey, that model is no longer gonna work. And like you are saying, and this is also news to you, I should think you need to go back and put your house in order on that one so that there is a, this matters that we're raising. And then the issue that I wanted to know, in fact, it's with regard to the, I think you've covered most of the things on the issues because on the DG for her to comment and for us to sit here and waste time, she'll just have to submit those matters. And then the, the, then the, the issue of the capacity that will do now that we are on hard lockdown, as you are saying, uh, but you can see that report, the manner was prepared, especially with the one on the agrarian revolution. Somebody had to just do the narrative and deal with the matters. Are we going to resolve these discrepancies? And now it's like the committee now is coming here to teach people that they must be going on site. But if you check all these programs, they've got project managers. And this project managers, they report to some people in the department and they've been in and out to these provinces. Because this is some of the information that we've been asking. Simple things on the issue of the reporting of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the, of the NGPOs. It's just to do a spreadsheet to say for this financial year, this, this NPO has not yet a, reported because you can see there are various financial year where there are some NPOs that were being paid for not even accounting, not submitting timesheets, all those sort of things. So those are such information doesn't need somebody to go to 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 to, to the to the site. The information is there. And then like you you won't deny this thing DDG to say they are former officials. It's public knowledge. I'm surprised it's only you who don't know that. So I can plead with you, go and look at these people who are there. Some CEOs and managing directors of these NPOs. You must give us those names because to give us a name without telling us who are the beneficiaries, you give us the name of the 
the thing. That's why we're saying we need this information so that we need to also be able to do what to visit this project. It's a concern for us. There's a lot of money that is this being spent here. We want to see the value for money up to for for this money. So that's the issue that we are interested on this matters to say. You must give us this matters. Maybe if you want the chairperson to write back to you, seemingly because, but I believe the team in the community section have been requesting this information. The information is, is not just coming DM. I don't know for what reasons, but like we are saying, we are going to deliberate. So on the date, when must you submit? We know these two weeks is for hard lockdown, but we should think, let, let the official use this opportunity to consolidate the information at their disposal. So that at least when this hard lockdown comes when, and we're having something tangible, we're going to try to reschedule this meeting because you remember we've set aside two days, even including today we thought we we're gonna deal with the actual report on the program, the issues that we raise, and then tomorrow we're going to focus on the agrarian revolution. It means we also have to also postpone our meeting for tomorrow based on these issues. But like we're saying, we're going, I think tomorrow as a committee will meet to deliberate on these matters, but DM, we can give you time. They must go and refine that report. In all fairness, if you read that report, it's such an insult to committee members, the way it has been written. I don't think the senior management ever read that document because they could have said, what is the implication for the committee? Why are we sending this information raw as it is? At least if there's been an effort to do some remedial action to say, we are aware of this over expenditure. This is what we are doing. The report is silent, doesn't say anything about that. So these are some of the things I think uh, you have covered it well, uh, DM. On the time tomorrow, I think we'll reconvene as the committee, then we'll be able to give you the time frame. Am I wrong, colleagues, or you want to propose so that we don't even meet tomorrow? Let me hear from the colleagues on the time frame as requested by the DM. Who wants to speak? The chairperson, whilst you are calling for hands, can I also maybe request through, through you to the secretary of the committee if they can give us all those comments verbatim from the, from the previous meetings? Chairperson, do you hear me? I'm listening. Yeah, I was saying if we through you, we can get the verbatim scripts uh, or minutes of the previous comments by members, all articulating what the, the questions and the points they wanted to see in the reports from all the previous meetings, because there seems to be like confusion as to what exactly is the committee expecting. I've taken notes for today, but probably the previous ones also, so that even when we look at the report and we build on it, we really respond to the key issues raised by honorable members. So if those uh, records can be also uh, be, be given to us, thank you very much. The DM, our experience with the officials, some come to the meeting sleeping. We still have a matter that Chamber Fosin is still need to report to us on it. You see the guy is practically sleeping in the meeting and then it's giving more load to the secretariat to give, give you the batim reports. Last time when I closed the meeting, I asked, is there anything that you don't understand out of our requests? If you don't, please, please feel free to write to us to say, is this the information? That thing never came. We, we gave you the program of the committee, nothing came. And then information, just being sent to us through raw ATCs. I understand that will be made available, but you know we are operating, we've got a hefty program. It's demanding so much from our support staff. It's gonna be given to you, but I think in future DM, we are doing it for your sake that you need that. That information will be given to you. 
because that's the frustration that we are encountering with this department. We don't know, but with other entities, with the other department, DTA, we raise issues in the same format, our issues get responded to. That's the frustration of the committee members. Uh, colleagues, you've heard what the DM has requested. What timeline are we giving them so that we don't reconvene tomorrow? In the meantime, when I'm waiting for the colleagues, can I ask the members of the house that are here? Nkosi Shinga, Nkosi Hadi Muroka, Nkosi Mavuso, all of you, you have seen that slide. If you're not given the presentation on the projects that are in your area, I would like to have your comments when we meet next time to say, indeed, these are the projects that are in our area. SMPs also now we are all constituency period. Like I've already indicated, on my case, there's nothing to go and look at because the place that is even mentioned is in the wrong municipality. But I'll ask the co other colleagues, we'll check with our other colleagues to check also on these projects when the hard lockdown gets uh, comes to an end. Honorable Mukalipi, what is the proposal that you are giving on the time frame? And we must be we must be upfront. This is for the last time, but we are still going to deliberate on this matter as a committee. Yes, Chair. No, I think you are correct, Chairperson. Uh, the proposal of the DM of ACAS is too far. And the DM thing, I, I thought that DM is also having our understanding that this matter has been coming uh, to this committee and go back to the department, but nothing seems to be improving. So therefore, I think that the department has gotten enough time to respond on what we have raised before, including today's presentation. So uh, postponing until ACAS, I don't think it will be wise. So we must just decide, Chairperson, as soon as possible, when can they come back with all those feedback. And then I just want also to comment on, I think it's a DDG, Upristorias, uh, about those uh, uh, junior staff members who under, including, including that NGO in Segaetu. And in the presentation from Mr. Leitu, that in Segaetu was also having a question to say that, how does it work? Because I saw in KZN, in many, many regions, is that NGO that is responsible for this project if, or the one that he was pre repre presenting on it. So therefore, if you are continue giving, going to give them uh, more projects in order for them to, 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 to make money, while in the process they undermine our people, uh, now we need to deal with that decisively. But I'm happy that we are going to give, get a feedback on all those junior staff members that I also mentioned, because I told them in the email that I'm going to take this to the portfolio committee because we don't even respond to my as a member of this portfolio committee when this thing has been reported to you for the longest time. They think they are big, they've arrived. But I will patiently wait for the DTG who committed himself that is going to attend to it. But in a nutshell, Chairperson, I don't think we must take, uh, we must adhere to what uh, the DA must propose. We must come back immediately to deal with these matters because I think for me, it has been a question of uh, being raised. It, 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 they have enough time as a department to respond. Thank you, Chair. Okay. Is that the only end that is up? Okay. I still think, uh, my apologies, the meeting that we're going to hold was on Thursday, not tomorrow. Let me apologize on that. And I hope the uh, deputy chair, acting chair, you have had our consent to say, you need to assist us. Because what we see on paper, we know that's not what is happening on the ground. And uh, this, this has been a very strategic program, DM if it was utilized correctly to its maximum benefits. Now you are talking about poverty, unemployment and inequality. Now with COVID is worse. This program was going to seriously intervene and assist a great deal. But where it is, 
I'm more much more confused by the comments of the TDG to say even the model is going to be revised. So it's like these things is not going to happen during our life, our during our tenure, somewhere when we are all gone. But uh, le le let me allow to say, let me send them this thing to say, maybe we can discuss and deliberate as a committee in session on Thursday for an hour. But then we allow the department to go back and rework. I hope today you won't need today's records. What I said, you heard me. What Honorable Mukalipi raised, you heard. What Honorable Kleza said, you heard him. What Honorable Brink said, you heard him. And what Honorable Direko said, you heard all of them. So it's going to be a bit different when we reconvene. We we'll look at our program because we utilize uh, Thursday to also discuss our program for the next term. Then and also to prepare, so we can then reconvene, and then we'll be able to give you a date, which is the earliest August. That will be too late because we've got other things to deal with. But towards the end of July, maybe it is a middle ground DM. We can find a date there where we'll collectively agree. The reason why we schedule this now during the constituency period is because of the agency this matters they, they, they deserve. So let, let's end it here. Let me thank you, DM and the team. Thank you, uh, Deputy Chairperson. Oh, before that, Honorable Brink wants to say something. Honorable Brink. Sorry, Chairperson, um, I should have uh, used the opportunity earlier to make this comment. Uh, but just while we're speaking, and I, I don't want to open a new issue or a new debate, while we're speaking about the review of the CWP model, um, let the new uh, DDG or uh, whatever Mr. Pretorius's job description is, let him just take note that um, since we have been elected members of parliament, there has been a talk in very vague terms about the review of the model. But what has been missing from the outset is a clear indication of the policy objectives that uh, need to be satisfied by such a review. Sure, uh, there has been irregular tenders, massive multi-billion rand irregular tenders awarded. Uh, the, um, the system of invoicing and of uh, uh, um, what is these list, list attendance lists of workers and so forth, that is a mess ghost workers, all of the, so, I mean, those are administrative issues. No model should, should have those kind of defects. But also, uh, um, please, the minister must apply her mind and the deputy as to the policy objective. And maybe the committee can give input into this. Uh, for example, should it be the policy that one set of beneficiaries keep on benefiting year after year after year, or should it be the policy that beneficiaries are rotated, uh, say after two years? Or so, you know, um, please, uh, when when uh, uh, the executive dis discuss the, discusses the review of the model, please apply your minds to the policy objectives that that want to that uh, that need to be satisfied, not just uh, in in vague terms. Uh, thank you, Chair. And at some point, this review must come to an end. We've yes. been here since 2019. We've been told this model is being reviewed. 2019 has come and gone. 2020 has come and gone. 2021 is come and gone. <clears throat> is this thing actually going to happen in our lifetime? That's why when we meet, you need to give us also a roadmap to that event. Because the last time we were told this, the model is readily available. What was left is cabinet approval. Now today we are hearing, that's how it happens when it comes to this program. Every time when we meet, we get different information. That's why I for one has decided to just keep all the presentation with me whenever I meet with you, because you can see the inconsistencies that come with these matters, uh, Honorable Mkalipi. 
So basically, that's it to say. Will it actually happen during our lifetime? I doubt, but it's a matter for another day. That's why we need to see a roadmap. Where are we actually? The DM is saying there was a process. The DDG is saying, no, that model was wrong. <laughs> I don't know, but let's get it. We we'll also need to get clarity on this thing of the policy. Where is it actually? What is the status of the policy now? Because throughout, it couldn't be shared with us because it was not yet approved by cabinet. So that's where we come from. Yeah, so basically that's it to say, I don't think it's our nature of this committee that will be seized with matters that get unresolved. We've tried our level best to troubleshoot. That's why I think let's meet colleagues on Thursday just for an hour. We need to discuss uh, even the program and the other matters. Can I attend the meeting? I'll also await the feedback, the comment from the House members, Deputy Chairperson and Acting Chairperson on this project that is, if Koshirini, they are not uh, given the presentation, can you send it to the COO, CEO of the house so that they get the presentation for them? I want the house to also comment when we reconvene. Thank you so much, uh, especially our senior traditional leaders that are still here in our midst at this wee hour of the night, Thursday. Thank you so much. Thank you, Deputy Minister and the team. The meeting gets urgent. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chair. And bye-bye. Uh, Thanks. Thank you, Chair. Bye. Thank you, Chair. OK. See ya. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Bye. The prince and princesses. Thank you. Thank you so much.